an open platform for you to express your success and happiness. This is Minutes of Greatness podcast with David and Mark. Welcome back. Episode four of Minutes of Greatness. And we are humbly welcomed by Joe O'Brien. Joe O'Brien is a motivational speaker as well as an EFT therapist. Joe, just to start the podcast off, give us a 60 second elevator pitch of yourself, my friend. Okay, guys. Um, thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. As you know, guys, my name is Joe O'Brien. I am what's called a master EFT practitioner, which stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. I help people to release trapped emotions and energy blocks, uh, primarily from traumatic events from the past and whatever trapped emotions they may, may be holding on to know that are preventing them from moving forward, from being stuck. My background is in construction. I've spent 40 years in construction as a plasterer. My interests have been um, martial arts and training, primarily weight training, literally all my life. I've never stopped training. I'm still training up until this day. And um, I love it with a passion. I love to instill people with my passion. And this is where the motivation and inspiration comes in. And I give a lot of talks to companies, schools and colleges. And basically, I help people to change their lives. Brilliant. Brilliant. Fantastic. Fantastic. We love to hear it. And so the first question we're going to dive in with, Jor, um, is basically, what's the biggest thing you wish you had known when you began your current career venture? biggest thing I wish I had known. How to use my mind how in a nutshell, Mark. If I'd yeah. known how to use my mind many, many years ago, things would have been a lot different, but I am where I am now at this moment in time, which is wonderful, and I've had many different experiences. But if I'd known at a young age, and this is why I try to instill in people what I didn't know back then about the power of positive thinking. And as you know, we create our own reality by the thoughts that we think and we're as a result of our past experiences. But to answer that question again, if I had known how to use my thoughts properly, it would have been so, so different, to be honest with you, you know, because what I do know and what I realize from my experiences, that energy follows thought, and you get what you think of, whether you want it or not, so be careful what you think of. And you literally create everything from the time you open your eyes in the morning by the thoughts that you think so. To answer that question, as, as you asked me first again, I'm going to say it again. I wish I'd known how to use my thoughts and my mindset, my visualization and my creative imagination would have been just brilliant. fantastic. But I've, learned, but I've learned from I've learned from not learning that at such a young age, and this is why I do what I do now. So it's, it's helped great. kind of shape, it's almost helped shape the direction you're you're kind of gone in in a way now, yeah. Great question, Mark. Cheers, thank you, um, thank you. I absolutely love that. And especially if you, I'm obviously, I, you've helped me massively, Jar, as well with, with confidence wise. I was, I was not even quite like a mouse, but you know, I, I never wanted to intrude as much, you know, and it kind of stopped me from, um, I don't know, giving myself the confidence, I guess, to put one foot forward. Um, and it was about, Jesus, probably about this time last year. Um, when I think I got in touch with, with yourself, Char, on Instagram. And I remember I, I even said it to Mark, I had this fear of like social anxiety. Um, I couldn't post anything. I, I couldn't put myself out there, if that makes sense. And a lot, a massive majority of people are, are feeling that in today's society. And, you know, you, you 100% gave me that, um, that help that I, I kind of needed to, to shape where I was going, the way I was feeling and where my mindset was kind of leading, if that made sense. Um, like, I wouldn't have thought this in 100 years that I'd be doing this, if this makes sense, or posting stuff on Instagram. And, you know, it almost, pardon my French, but you you don't give a shit on opinions anymore. Um, and you treat negative stuff almost as a barking dog. Um, you know, you just you just leave it there. It's, it's it has nothing to do with it. You know, so like, I I love that whole um the whole perception. Just for another 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 question, um, what has been so far in your career of motivational speaking and EFT therapist? What has been the biggest fail, and what have you learned from it? As, as an energy therapist, yeah. um, like. Failure can be put into two different uh, categories, and I look at failure as experiences, okay, because if you haven't learned from past events, 
then you can't possibly move on. Okay. And there's no point in beating yourself up. You just need to, you know, get back up again and just, just go forward. It's all about growth. It's about understanding as a human being. And, you know, the more interaction you have with people and past experiences, it's the only way you're going to grow and have a better understanding of where you want to, it's what you want to achieve in life and, you know, where you want to end up, basically, you know. But regarding failures, I, you know, I, I try not to entertain them, even looking back at stuff. I don't look at them as failures. I look at them as, as learning opportunities in my life. And I'm so grateful for the negative aspects, the negative experiences that I've had. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now unless I went through those. I, I even I even think that the word failure has kind of that that negative thing, but which which in my way of life need feels it needs a change. A failure is just um a wall being built in your direction, but it doesn't stop you, if that makes sense. Failure comes with a change of direction and to excellent. a form of success, you know. So excellent, Mark. Yeah. Oh, sorry, excellent there, uh, yeah. But like when you think about it, you you've created the failure yourself, okay? Albeit at an unconscious level, but know that you're consciously aware. And yes, it, it is a, a negative uh, word. It is a negative thought, and it is a negative vibration. So a lot of news in the word failure. You know, something I tried, that experience didn't work out. But boy, I am not going to stop. I'm going to drive on from this because I've learned from it. So uh, let's change the word failure and put in experience. I think is a better thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, learning, learning experience, absolutely. Learning, like, yeah. like you win or you, you win or you learn. Um, and that's that should be the mindset that people have. Like, Very again, good. it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a failure. It should be, okay, maybe one or two things didn't go to plan, but I can adjust these now through this experience and turn it into a success or a win or or a positive. You know. Mm, absolutely. I mean, from from the so-called failure experience, if you haven't learned from it then you need to learn from it. Like people come to me and they say I make terrible mistakes. In my opinion, there's no mistakes in life, Mark. I think everything is an experience, but it's what you take from the experience. The, the golden nuggets, I call them, is what's really going to help you to grow because you can either accept what has happened, offer no more resistance to it, and then start to grow and think, you know something? That happened for a reason. You don't really even have to question why did it happen, it happened for a reason. And this has given me more conscious awareness and clarity going forward with what I need to do with my life because of what has happened in the past. And I'm truly grateful for it. Absolutely, absolutely. And like the butterfly effect as well is is um is a massive thing. Like failure is part of life. There's there's no there's no avoiding it or experiences. Like you're gonna have experiences and, and learning curves in life. And I suppose it's what you do with those then, like the decisions you make when those when those things happen. Like you said, you can either drive on and, and learn from those things and, and put yourself in a better spectrum, or you can do the opposite and, and kind of hide away and, and stop yourself and halt your progress because of one or two learning curves, you know? And so like it's it's a it's a big thing to have um a positive and a strong mindset to make sure that you're constantly trying to progress and constantly trying to push yourself in that right direction to better yourself. Yeah, excellent, excellent, Mark. It's like when when people come to me, and, and, it, and to be fair, I mean, nearly everybody that comes to see me, they've got issues in their life, but it's primarily emotional, okay? And it's like the cause of all negative emotion is a disruption in the body's energy system. Probably all known disease and illnesses as a result of trapped emotions, okay? And I'll just give you one thing. I had a client recently, and he had a pain in his right-hand side for years, many, many years. And I said, that's where your, where your kidneys is. Your kidney is, or your kidneys are. And then... Um, he said, I've had it for years, it just hasn't left me, but I said, this is where you hold on to fear. So I just started doing some tapping on him and addressed a couple of fear issues. And I'd say maybe a minute and a half later, he, his eyes kind of opened up and he goes, oh my God, said, what's the matter? He said, the pain is gone. I've it's never a known it. thing, like, yeah. I've never known yeah, it, he said, not to have pain. But he said, that's, that's how effective and detrimental that trapped emotions can have within the internal organ system. And it's like anxiety for instance, is held in the stomach or the spleen. I think that everybody that experiences anxiety knows exactly what I'm talking about. That knot in the stomach, you know? And again, our, our internal organ system harbors negative emotions and they vibrate at, at negative frequencies. And this is where known disease and illness starts to manifest itself within the physical body because we're unable to express and to deal with trapped emotions from past negative traumatic experiences. So it, it dwells inside us it festers and it causes a myriad of problems psychologically, emotionally, mentally, unless it's released. 
you cannot possibly heal. You just cannot heal. And as I say, memories buried that I never die. They need to be released. It's not that you go looking for them. It's not trying to dredge up the past. And even when people sit in front of me, I don't go looking for stuff. It just happens. It comes up on its own accord. And when it comes up, it's coming up for a reason because it needs to be addressed. And then when you see that overwhelming feeling of, uh, of euf euphoria, when somebody actually starts to delve in and deal with these trapped emotions that they've been holding on to literally all their lives, and it's like, there's a blank slate there then. It's like, you know, it's the most incredible feeling when you start to release this, this built up energy, there's a lightness that comes over you, the client or whatever, and it it's, can be absolutely life changing. Great stuff. That's that's mad. Like I find that I find that extremely interesting because again, like I suppose my area of expertise would be the the, the outside of the body, like coming from a, a fitness instructor's background. So like the fit the physical aspect of you know resistance training, fat loss, draw muscle gain, all that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> to hear the like to see how intricate stuff the the internal side of things are from someone who wouldn't be an an, an expert in that area in that area. Like it's it's fan it's fascinating to hear like how how you can help relieve certain aspects of people's lives through that that um through that way that direction if that makes sense yeah yeah and it's it's incredible and it's it's very fulfilling for me to be able to help people I don't take yeah. any credit for it you know there's no ego with me even some of the stories that that I might tell might seem egotistical but it's not I'm just telling stories you know but it's so rewarding to be able to help somebody that's in in dire need of of emotional and physical help. It's just, it's fantastic. It's the most wonderful feeling. And how long have you been, have you been practicing this, Jared? And then how, how did it come, how, how did it come about to get to that, to, to get to that, that line of work? And, and how long have you been doing it? Brilliant. Um, that question was asked many, many years ago when I was out socializing with my buddy. And uh, somebody said, how long are you doing this, sure? And straight away, he just jumped in. He goes, Jerry's doing this all his life. And I knew exactly what he meant. I've always yeah. helped people. I've always wanted to help people because of experiences in my past. It kind of um, guided me in towards the energy therapy probably about 15 years ago where I started to take it really serious and started to study. And um, then I became what, what I do today and lots more besides. And, you know, I, I, never, I never stopped learning. I'm constantly learning all the time to better myself for one particular reason, that is to help my clients as much as I possibly can with the knowledge that I, that I have acquired and that I will continue to acquire. I want to just be the best that I can possibly be to make that massive, profound difference in their lives for them to move forward. Brilliant, brilliant. And I'm just yeah. going to stop the recording there for one moment, Harry. Cool. Perfect. And um, so as well, Jer, um, just in regards to your business, is there any... Any like gadgets or projects or apps that help you maximize the potential of, of your work? Um, obviously, YouTube is a wonderful thing, but um, I'm, a, I'm a great believer in, in the written word. I'm, I'm constantly reading all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's the last thing I do at night, apart from um, visualization techniques. Um, but it's, I read every night, even if it's one chapter of... Um, of a book that I'm, I'm interested in regarding all it's all positive it's it's all positive um regarding youtube there's there's incredible stuff on youtube you know and um, yeah. the like esther and jerry hicks now for instance i'd encourage anybody that's listening to to delve into that esther and jerry hicks the teachings of abraham it uh, would be extremely beneficial to anybody that wants to learn and to to try and get into the zone that, that i'm kind of in to a certain extent when they delve into the likes of Esther and Jerry Hicks, they'll have a better understanding of, of actually where I'm coming from, you know? Yeah. Well, like, even like that, like, speaking back to, to the fact, like, what we were speaking about when you decided to pursue this career, and it's about constantly learning and, and constantly evolving yourself and educating yourself more and more to help your clients, I suppose, isn't it? So it I is. suppose they're, they're two of the best tools you can kind of get as, you know, learning from professionals on YouTube or, or reading from books and, and taking tidbits to add to your own to your own kind of repertoire then, like. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, we're, we're all in this together. We're all one. You know, we all look after one another. We all help each other out on the planet, you know. And then um, yeah. it's, it's all about um, that self-awareness and to try and create more knowledge because it's not about me. It's about my clients. It's what I can do for them at the end of the day. 
It's the most important thing. It's everything. It's everything, you know. Yeah. So when anybody comes to see me, it's, it's 100% every single time. No questions asked. Even if you were to come and see me, Mark, the next time you come to see me, it's 100% again. You just don't drop your guard. You can't do drop it. Off, like. yeah. You can't do yeah. it. And, and you would be untrue to, to the client and you'd be untrue to yourself. Yeah, very good. Um, if, I, if, if you could name three people, Jor, that have helped you throughout your journey, your career and stuff like that, who would the three people be? Three people be? Um, do you know something, guys? I suppose one of, one of the things was, um, was uh, Rhonda Byrne. Rhonda Byrne. The secret, the secret book that came out many, many years ago. There you go, my friend. <laughs> yeah, stuck, stuck with the cobwebs on it. Keep reading it. It's, 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 it's written in layman's terms. It's just simple to understand. And what it, how it came about, and you posed the question where to go, Mark, and uh, I, was, I was rabbiting on about something else, but you were saying, how did I get involved in the energy therapy and everything? Was that I was actually working at the time. I was classroom, and um, a, a guy came on, on site, Mark, lovely fella, and lunchtime he just started speaking about the secret book and then um, i was intrigued i just started listening and oh, that sounds very interesting and i said tell me more about that mark and of course you know what it's like knowing a site and stuff some of the lads were laughing i said what are you on about you know but my ears were perked up you know i was listening yeah. intensively and uh he said told me about the book cut long story short i went into waterstones straight after work and i bought the book and i read half the book that night right yeah. And half the, book the following night, and I just kept reading the book and reading the book constantly over and over again until I could take it in, and that was the start of it. That was the start of, I suppose, my journey regarding the power of, of positive thinking and how energy works and vibrational frequencies and everything else besides. Okay. That, that was really the start of it. So it was Rhonda Byrne, and um, there was like, as as regards influencing me, I suppose, Aaron Schwarzenegger. Really. We're all Ernie, huh? <laughs> all Ernie, well, yeah. I mean, I was into the I was into the training before you lads were even born, you know. And I go back yeah. to old guys like like the Perry Ray there, and then um, um, you know these these are old guys that played the train. Franco yeah. Colombo, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know there was so many. Even Dorian Yates. I mean, back in the in the eighties, I met Dorian Yates twice. I met him in London oh, really? twice, you know. And then um, you all know who Dorian Yates is. It? Seven times Mr. Olympia, was it? Yeah. Do we watch? Where, where did you meet him? I met him in, um, I met him when I was training in a place called Yorkie's Gym in South London in back in 1980, 1987. He oh, was British yeah. bodybuilding champion, yeah. And uh, the, the gym owner said, uh, Dorian Yates is coming down. And I knew who he was because I used to buy the bodybuilding magazines and that. So I came back down after, after my train. I had a motorcycle at the time, drove back down. And Doreen Yates was there with his manager. No, he just talked on all the rest of it and answering questions. And then, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding you lads. He took off his top, <laughs> top down the pants. He, he, did, he did the short, the brief son. It was just, it was out of this world. Yeah. It was out of this world, okay? And we were in awe and I got a, I got a signed photograph off him, you know, and it just said, go for it, Gerard, you know? That was it, I still have that. And um, he was on about the night of the champions. In New York, yeah, which was uh, I suppose second to the Mr. Olympia at the time, or the Mr. Universe, and uh, we were talking about that. Anyway, he went out, and I was following his career from from there on, on after, and he came second in the night of the champions, and I think it was a uh, could be wrong. Oh, Samir Benous was his name. No, he, he he's he's dead today. I think he came first. I could be wrong, but the crowd went absolutely ballistic because. He should have won it. Dorian Yates yeah. should have won it. And <laughs> after that, he won everything. And they used to call him the shadow because he'd come and he was gone. Literally like a shadow. He'd come and he'd compete and he was gone again. Gone. He didn't train in the likes of Venice Beach in all the lovely yeah. afternoon oh, no. places. He trained, in a, he trained in, a, in a really dulgy little gym up in the north of England. No heating in there with all old free weights again. And then he'd go back for the next minute to Olympia and nail it. So it was unbelievable and uh, yeah he was also an inspiration and i met him then in um i think it was four years ago i was in london and i went to a mind body spirit festival in, in olympia in, in london 
and it was just an, I'd encourage you to go to, I'd suggest to go to this lad whenever this thing is lifted again because I'm going to go back with my daughter you know um, absolutely fantastic mind body spirit in Olympia and I was walking along looking at the stalls and I saw this person in front of me and this is no word of a lie guys right all I saw was the back right and I thought that's Dorian yet no, I hadn't seen him in we'd say in 30 years and next thing, we had to turn around, and lo and behold, Dorian Yates. So I, I went up to him, and I said, uh, how are you doing, Dorian? I said, my name is Joe O'Brien. Shook the hand. And I said, I remember you. In 1987, I was training in York East. went through the whole story. And he goes, man, it's you some memory. I said, yes, they've been following your career ever since. And I said, it's been an inspiration. So I sat down with a cup of coffee. We were chatting for a while. And then... Um, I also said to my, I saw you on, I don't know, have you, have you seen him on, on what's called London Reel? It's on YouTube. And uh, he's talking about the stuff that I talk about. It's That's just amazing. amazing. I said, yeah, I said, you've gone from the bodybuilding into being more consciously aware of who you are and more spiritual and stuff like myself, you know, how we transition yeah. in life. So that story, and, and of course, um, Errol Schwarzenegger, um, unbelievable influence. Why? Because of his vision, his, uh, his creative imagination, and the power of his thoughts created what he became. And you know that, guys, yourselves. He created what he became himself today. Exactly. The next one yeah. is, um, excuse me, was, um, I, I, played, I played soccer lads, right? And um, this guy's name was Jamie Lawrence. And I played... I won't go through the whole story because this might come up again in a couple of questions, but I was 27 years of age at the time and I was playing football in, in, in London, soccer. And uh, this, this young kid, young black kid, right, started. And I, I, I took, we, we got on like a house on fire and he was only, I think he was 17 or 18 years of age at the time. And he was a brilliant player. I was playing outside left, as they call it, on the wing, but I view all terminology. Outside left I played. And Jamie was on the right wing. So we played brilliant together. Um, we were scoring more goals than, than the striker was scoring, you know. We, we just really gelled together. So we'd come into the clubhouse afterwards, and I'd always buy Jamie uh, a bottle of Guinness. He was, he was skinned, the poor fella, right? I'd always buy him a couple of bottles of Guinness, and I'd sit down and have a chat with him. And then I used to be saying, Jamie, you've got some incredible talent, you know. And he was saying, I oh, have talent, Sean. And he used to be saying, I'd give anything to have what you have. I, and I used to say then to him, I missed the board, Jamie. Look, I'm 27. I thought I was too old at 27, right, at this stage. And he said, I'd give anything to be able to play like a job. Anyway, I nailed him down. I said, Jamie, you've got incredible talent. I said, keep your head down. I said, I'm telling you, I can see what you have in you. You'll make it. And then a couple of weeks later, I found out something. I said, I hear you've been hanging around with um, the dodgy crew from South London. And I said, you're going to get into trouble, Jamie. I said, well, just listen to me and pull away from it. Fast forward, Jamie got done for some crime, I don't know, was it a armed robbery with an imitation fire? I don't know what it was. I could be wrong in saying I'm not, I'm not saying that he did that, but he got done for, for something anyway, and he got uh, he got sent to prison, right? Right. Wait for this now. He's in prison, and um, they allowed him to play football in the prison, obviously, but they also allowed them to um, to play outside the prison. Obviously, they're, they're being guided. No one looks after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Outside the prison. So, in the prison team, you're going to love this story, guys. Honest to God. Outside yeah. the prison, they played, and they played against a semi-professional team called Coes, C-O-W-E-S, on the course. <laughs> and then, um, the manager saw what he liked in Jamie, right? So, he said to the warden, if Jamie keeps his head down, we'll sign him in the semi-pro side, right? So, Jamie kept his head down, was doing his time, but he was allowed out to play for them on the weekend on a Saturday. And uh, he got on great. So fast forward anyway, Jamie got left out. He ended up playing for Coes. And as it progressed then, he got a call from Bradford City. Wow. In, the Premier League, in the Premier League. Yeah, he yeah. ended up, no, there's a, a bit more to the story. He ended up playing in the Premier League. He ended up playing for Bradford City and playing for Leicester City. And he also ended up playing for the Jamaican Jamaica national team. No, he's the coach of the of the of the Guyana team, I believe, you know. I'm in contact with him all the time. And um, 
I mean, if that's not an inspiration, what is, you know what I mean? That's incredible. Is, yeah. He never gave up. He never gave up. And even when I spoke to him that time, he said, I'll never forget, shot where we spoke in the clubhouse. Because I had contacted him after so many years, you know, just to tell him how proud I was. And obviously he's, he's, he's receiving thousands of emails and stuff and texts from everybody. But when I just said, Irish Jerry from such and such football team, I'd say within seconds he was on the phone to me. And we had a fantastic chat, you know. Brilliant. So, yeah, that's, never, that's give yeah. never give up. Yeah, jeez, that's some story. Yeah. Just goes to show, like, that, you know, even if things do get a bit shitty, there's always, there's always a way back into, there's always a way to get to rise back up above it, like, isn't it? Yeah. And do you know what he's doing today, guys? Apart from being, being the coach of Guyana, um, he's a personal trainer. What? And you should check him out, Jamie Lawrence. He is fit, man. I tell you. Like myself, may I add, in the 50s, you know, he's fit. Yeah. <laughs> fit. And he's, he's training, nice. I think, every single day of the week. He does personal training and all the rest of it. But check him out, Jamie Lawrence, on Instagram. I will have to. That's brilliant. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah. That's a superb I'm story. Sorry. And it's, it's great. They, you know, it's when you can see the difficulty someone going through and that they're able to turn it around like that and, and keep that going, keep that consistency and that drive in the right direction. It's amazing mm. how far you can go. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. Like that, that's an unbelievable story. I'm definitely going to get yeah, you yeah. follow anyway, James. Fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. fantastic. Um, George, is there any sort of is there any common myths about your area of expertise that you would wish to debunk here with us? Oh yeah, I suppose the most common myth, Mark, is that uh, it doesn't work. It's a load of gobbledygook. That's it in a nutshell, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> As, as you probably know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the radio on a regular basis, and I was in with PJ there going back a while on 96 FM. And uh, he posed the question to me, he said, Joe, what, um, what if people think this is all hairy fairy and stuff, you know? And I just paused for a second and I said, the person with a closed mind is open to nothing. Brilliant. What a quote. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And I, that's that's really why I paused good. for a second because I was trying to think how do I answer this question. And that, ans- that answered that question like that. like that. And then I went on from there, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we say in, in, in the energy therapy, uh, and I'm speaking on for all energy per- therapists, whether they be doing Reiki or whatever, but me as an EFT practitioner, we say EFT works sometimes where nothing else has worked before. And it really does, to be honest, you know. Um, yeah. I suppose... Again, when I said at the start, lads, it's not about me. I'm not talking about it. I'm just telling stories. But I'll give you one, one, one example. Was, um, and this lady actually went on the radio speaking about what had happened. She'd come to me with a Zimmer frame. And the Zimmer frame, excuse me, was literally hopping off the, off the ground. All right, I'll go back a small bit. I was in London at the time, and I was coming home every, every four weeks. And a friend of, 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 a, of a friend told me about this lady that was... Uh, had these tremors and her body just wouldn't stop shaking. It was constant. It was like 24 hour epilepsy. Her body just didn't stop shaking. So I said, why don't you get her to give me a call, you know? I, I'd, be, I'd come back from London on a Friday. I'd be treating people all day Saturday and Sunday and I was back to Lon- London Monday, barely saw my family, right? So that, that, that's what you do when you get into, into something like I'm doing. You just, you never turn anybody away and you're always there for them, yeah. you know? So I said, give, give the girl a call. And uh, she said, there's nothing you'll be able to do with her. I said, well, you just get her to give me a call. Anyway, I mean, who does this, right? I got her number and I rang her and I said, look, bad bang, would you mind? And she started crying on the phone. She said, there's nothing you'll be able to do with me. I said, well, you just come down and give it a try. She didn't live far from me, so she came down. Her husband dropped her off outside the door and I just happened to be in the living room. So I wrote the window and her body was hopping and the Zimmer frame. The husband drove off. I went out. And I said, hi, my name is Jar. And she started crying. And she said, there's nothing you'll be able to do with me, right? So I said, look, come on, come on away. And we go around, around the side to my clinic and we get working on you. And then um, I started talking about where has this come from? And it was six weeks previous. She was making a cup of tea, normal thing. And she went to pick up the tea and the hand started shaking and the cup fell on the ground. And she got an awful fright and sat down. The hand was still shaking. And then the other hand shook and then the entire body started shaking. Her body was hopping off the couch and they were all crying and traumatised in the house and they got her up to the hospital and they were putting on medication and everything and it just didn't stop. There's nothing they could, they could do with her. So they had her in the hospital for a week or two, I think. 
lots of medications and she saw all the best specialists and stuff, nothing they could do. And um, she was crying her eyes out in front of me, so I started to tap on her then. I started to tap and talk about what she felt might be the issues, why there was a physical reaction in the body from her emotional content. So we worked on stress, we worked on anxiety, we worked on things from the past that were relevant, that needed to be addressed because her body was in trauma, it was traumatized. So I walked on her and her hand stopped, stopped shaking completely, her right hand there for a couple of seconds, okay? And uh, then she started crying. She said, what do you have to do to me? I said, I've done nothing to you. So we're just working with energy blocks. She said, just go with the flow, you know? We were having a crack as well, eh? So I think 20, 25 minutes later, 20, 25 minutes later, she's just like you and me, guys, just like this, completely, completely gone. And... Um, that's unbelievable. She walked out the door. She walked out the door and uh, she gave me a hug. She nearly brought me ribs. It's still hurting me to this day, and that was years ago. And then um, when, when her husband pulled up, he got out of the car to me, and, and nobody says, What the f are you after doing to her? <laughs> so, what am I after doing to her? I said, Nothing. I said, Just an energy block, you know. And I said, Just see that thing there, that Zimmer frame thing. So, bring it home. I said, And chop it up, put it in the bin. Because you won't need it again. It's unbelievable, Jar. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's wonderful being able to see what you you can do to change someone like that, like you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I can't guarantee that with everybody, guys. You know what I mean? Of course, of course. The really wonderful ones, you know. But she had she was holding on to so much trapped emotions that it created a physical reaction in the body. Um, Jar, and just to just to finish the podcast off, by where can people find you on what platforms? Jar O'Brien, you get me on on on. That's it, Jordan O'Brien. I'm everywhere. I'm on Instagram. You're everywhere. Yeah. www.jordanobrien.com website, and you know, Brilliant. I'm there. I love the name. <laughs> Jor, just a just a massive thank you for coming on this morning, mate. Thank you, thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing your stories and your experiences and skill sets. Um, and again, everyone whoever's watching, thank you for watching, and please subscribe and share and follow the living crap out of everything that we make. Thank you and Thanks a lot, guys.